is this is parade um, in the the web client, and it's basically a kind of enhanced way of doing filtering in the center panel. So the regular filter is here. We can filter by images by a few things. Will, if you're sharing your screen, we can't see it at the moment. So oh, you can't. So I should no. ask. Um, oh, okay, so I've got to continue. I've got to agree to being recorded. Okay, is that, is that okay now? No, I still you we can't see your screen. Okay, let me try to stop share and start oh. again. Um, in fact, it's not even twelve o'clock yet, so we're okay. Um, okay, share screen. Um, this one, share. Is that better? Yes, I can see yeah, it. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, great. Let's um, let's pick up then. So, this is this is the web client, and I'm looking at images in the center panel, and I can filter those images using a an extension to the web, um, the Mero Parade, um, which is a web plugin that fills goes into the center. Um, of of the web client so one thing it can do um if you start off with all these collapses then i can show all expand all the data sets in the center here um and so it does some more interesting um filtering thing a bit slow um and i can i can load um data for example from an Ameri table um, and this is and use that data to filter so this is loading data that's um, associated with the the parent project um, so this is an Ameri table on that project and I've got all the column names for this table um, so I can load um, some values here and then I get oops Okay, let's choose a different one that's um, raw X range. Okay, so I get a I get a mini little histogram. Oh. Um, and yeah. Um, okay, and I can I can do some filtering with the slider. Um, this is just showing the regular data set view, then in a table layout I can add values to a table so for example raw y range table for reference um, I get these these values again loading them from a bunch of different um, sources and and I can plot those values so this gives me a plot of one image per um, point. So each of these points is, and, and the filtering as well was, was filtering um, by values on an image. So and I can filter um, the plot as well. Um, but if I look at these images, and the, these are images coming from IDR 79. Um, so these, we've actually got data for each cell um, in these images and in fact the data that I've got for the for the image itself is really just um, a, you know, a separate process that I had to go through to, to take all the values for each of the cells and, and combine them in some way so I've got values like the, the range of the y values so that, that tells you the, the coordinates the range of coordinates of each cell so these are really just um, what we really want to do is, is work with the values for each cell in these images. Um, but there's no way there's no way I can really do that here for very much based on filtering of, of, of the images. So this is kind of the current state of, of parade. Um, and so it's kind of a, as, a, as a side project, um, as an experiment, um, I've been working on this um, parade sort of next prototype. Um, and so when I open the project in 
in this app, um, it's first going to ask me um, what what data I want to work with. Um, so at the moment, I, it's just works with CSV um, tables, and I can combine the data in the CSV with a, with a few other sources of of data. Um, by default, I'm just going to get the data sets. Um, and so I'm loading all that, that data at once instead of loading um, a column at a time. I'm just loading the whole um, the whole CSV basically. Um, and then you can see the representation of this in this table at the bottom here. Um, and so I've got a column, um, all the columns across here, and yeah, the scroll bar is over the far side here. So I should say this data, these all um, data coming from IDR 79, um, all these images are in the IDR, and this, this table of, of values for all the ROIs in it are data that's included in the IDR um, submission. So all I've done is taken a table that came for each separate image. Um, and there's, there's about 130 images um, that we're looking at here and combine the tables for all those images into one table for the, for, I guess, for the project. Um, Sorry, Will, to interrupt your network is not the best. Maybe if you turn off your video like this, the sharing, because it takes a bit of time to load the data. And uh, yeah. um, screen. if you turn off your video, maybe, and then you should be still able to share your screen. Yeah, I hope so. That should be hopefully better. Okay. Thanks. Um, right. Um, okay. So, um, okay. So we've got a, a row for every ROI. Um, and on the left here, it's telling me there's, there's, 12, 13,000 um, ROIs from uh, about 30, uh, 130 images. Um, so I can, and one thing I can do in this table very simply is just sort by um, a particular column. And okay, so now it's, I'm, I'm choosing the roundness um, column and it's ascending order. You'll notice that the, that the ROIs um, in the top right here, also um, sorted in the same way and by sort by descending. Um, okay, so I'm seeing the most round ROIs at the top of, of the list now. I can scroll down that whole list of 13,000. Um, and then I can choose columns from all of these um, in the table for, for plotting here. So I'm going to um, plot the, so this is. Um, Coordinates tissue frame of reference is the kind of the corrective coordinates of Y for each um, image. Actually, let's do first. I'm going to plot, plot a correlation first. Roundness um, versus sphers sphericity. Um, I'm not exactly sure the difference between roundness and sphers sphericity, um, but there's uh, certainly a correlation. Um, and I can select particular um, ROIs um, to be shown in the right hand panel here. Um, so what I'm interested in, um, in this that's shown by this data is where where in the um, embryo uh, or the where in the tissue sample are the most round cells. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I can add additional um, plots. I'm going to add another a scatter plot here. Um, and let's make this, I don't know if it's going to show up okay, make this a bit bigger. Um, and okay, so what I'm going to do change on this plot here is plot the position of the um, cells within tissue, so tissue frame of reference. Um, 
on the y and on the x um, tissue frame reference x. So this shows the location of those um, highlighted cells, and then the, these plots are synchronized so that if I can highlight particular cells here, um, they'll they'll show up their location. Um, and so I can see, I think there's a, there's a slight preference for, for the most round cells to be along the center line of the, of the tissue. Um, another way I can look at that is to plot um, the sphericity on the x-axis here, and you'll see the most spherical cells are tend to be along the center line of the tissue, and the and the least um, spherical cells tend to be on the slightly away from the center line. Um, I can show that in another way. So on the left hand side here. I can, I'm showing histograms, um, so I can choose a value for, to add sphericity and uh, y coordinate. Um, and then if I filter, I can drag to filter. So um, the most spherical cells um, are, tend to be um, grouped along the, the center of the this y distribution um, and then I can drag this filter um, to show the least spherical cells and you'll see the distribution here um, changes to be to have these two peaks um, away from the center. Um, let's just reset that for a second um, and move one of those. So I can also filter here. So the, all the filtering and plotting so far has been by numerical values. I do also have um, a data set here, which is um, a text column. So this gives me an ability to show the distribution amongst all these categories. Um, and I'm gonna just type in here to um, filter by cells that are in this, this data set. Um, and what that gives me is um, it, show, it shows me cells that have a nuclear stain um, on them. So again, I'm going to filter just to show the um, the top few cells here, and I can see the, the, the most round cells here have got nuclear envelope breakdown, and you can see the chromatin. Um, okay, so I'm. Don't know how a second. Um, okay, so um, one thing I can um, a bit more experimental here is that I can um, group all of the rows of the table um, that I've got by a particular column of the table. Um, so again, this is this is um, kind of designed to be generic and not have anything particularly hard coded. But at least what makes sense in this case is that if I want to um, work with a per image and I want I want to aggregate all the um, values for the nuclei or um, the cells in that image, I can group um, all the data by image. So that basically gives me a completely new um, table. Um, so I can't do that as a sort of um, without losing the, the existing plots and stuff I had. Um, but what that gives me is a new table here where it's basically now one row per um, per image. Um, so that's basically just, just aggregated each row um, into uh, by, by image. So what it gives me is a column here of rows per image that was, um, which is effectively the ROI count on each of those images. Um, and then for all the other columns, um, it's aggregated them, it's given me an average. So for example, centroid for X, it's giving me an average, a minimum value, a maximum value, and a range. Um, so that allows me then, so there's a lot of columns because there, there are already a lot of columns and it's basically four times as many. Um, but now I can, I can kind of do what I um, did at the start, which is plot, a um, 
a range of um, values um, for each um, image. Um, so let's go to raw y range. Um, and so this is this is showing um, the range of, of y coordinates, kind of the width of the of the um, the tissue um, for corrected values, the tissue frame of reference, and the raw values. So the, so where they align well, it's um, they're quite um, horizontal images uh, uh, tissues where um, oops the Sorry, let me um, do that again. So where where there's where they're not on the um, the same uh, where they don't correlate well, that means the tissue is uh, at more of an angle. Anyway, so I can I can select um, a bunch of these again, um, and I can save this I can save this plot um, to Amero. What that's doing is is creating me a new image in a mirror um, um, based on the current plot, um, and you see it's it's giving me this option up here to open this plot. Um, so I can open with um, the various um, plugins um, by default. We just open these these five images. Um, I can add this add the newly created plot to it. So I can open six images. Um, so I was going to open this into a figure. Now I've got those five images I selected, and the the plot has has got those five points um, highlighted. So I can now go ahead and make my my figure um, from those images. Okay, um, just going to show a couple of other things on. Um, Starting with different some different data, um, I have some FRAP um, images here, um, and um, let me open this project with Parade. Okay. So in this case, um, what I have is for every time point, so these are movies, for every shape, um, if I plot across time, so, so I only have one ROI, one shape on each image, but it's recorded in, my, in, the, in the CSV table, it has a value for every point in time. Um, so if I, I can plot time against the mean intensity um, and I can see kind of a flat data um, emerging here with the beach point. Um, but what makes this a bit easier to understand is if I can group these um, by, in this case, the image name column. Um, and so now I can see all the different, um, the plots for the different um, images. And I can, I can select one like this. Um, or I can toggle them all, um, and I auto scale. I can see the the plot a bit better for these. Um, just a couple, another um, brief example um, for um, high content screening data. When I've got a screen plate well. Um, in this case, it gives me the um, ability to um, add um, a plot. Um, so let me just let me just show this plot of something, some values instead of IDs, um, mean intensity against area, for example, um, or actually some. Um, I can add here a plate layout um, component. Um, so this is actually what this is showing all these fields shows me that each of these wells has three fields of this plate and, and in the second plate, 
each well has five um, fields. Um, and I can show a heat map for um, certain values over this. Um, this is kind of not rendering particularly well because I've got one, it's using the range, the full range of the, um, of the area um, to generate the heat map. And then the vast majority of data is in the very low end of that. Um, but again, I can group. So in this case, I've got, I've got ROI data, data for every ROI within the image. Um, so I could group by image, um, but I can go even the next level up and group by wells. Um, and so now I should have um, data that's, that shows a heat map of, um, which is much, um, shows, shows the, the wells across the whole um, range. If I select single well, I can see all the, all the images, the multiple images within that well. Um, okay, so that's that's kind of all I'm going to show you for that. Um, and this has been, this has been kind of a side project over what, the last I know, year or two. Um, it's called Parade Cross Filter because um, I'm using a, a JavaScript library called Cross Filter to do the, the filtering. Um, and but to more recently, um, I've become aware of this um, nice um, app from the Gerenberg lab um, and um, called Vitesse. So this looks in many ways very similar. It's interesting. It's, it's also a, a, a React JavaScript application. It's, it's even using the same um, library that, that I'm using for, for for dragging things around. So the, the apps are kind of similar in many ways. Um, this is very much focused on imaging data coming from um, a single a single image, um, but it does a lot of the same things and we've got um, uh, data for individual ROIs and I can see a coordination between um, the plotted data and the ROIs. Um, so there's lot, lots of nice, um, features here, and this is a very well supported and well developed application. So um, it seems that maybe I shouldn't be trying to trying to reinvent the wheel um, and do something similar but different. And maybe we should try and reuse um, this application to do what we want to do um, with data from Romero. Um, so again, this is this really is very um, early days. For this idea, um, but um, so there's a, an Amer web app called Ameri Test, um, and what that allows you to do um, currently is to open um, a uh, an Ameri table. This is linked to an image. Um, I can uh, pick a couple of columns from this. For this image, so again, roundness and sphericity. Um, and when I click to open this from V tests, um, Amero generates the, the config and then provides the URLs, the endpoints for V tests that V tests wants to load um, the data for. And so I get the the a scatter plot of these um, plots once again it's the other. Um, so this doesn't give me a, a scatter plot with with named um, axes. This is really kind of designed for um, principal component analysis plot. So it's more more to view clustering rather than to show absolute values of these points. Um, but it does allow me to do the same thing. I can I can drag. I can see see again mo the most round cells and the top here along kind of along the center and I can highlight I can see the differences um, the individual cells um, so so it provides so, um, some of the same functionality the main limitation is that this is one image here I can't although it does allow me to show you see where the, the cells are within the image it's very nice um, and I can I can it's a full image viewer that I can use for 
Um, so it's got full rendering controls and stuff. Um, I've got a full image viewer. It still is only one image. Um, I'm actually not sure what it would have looked like if I had ROI points plotted here from um, yeah, 100 different images and I select a whole bunch of ROIs across many different images. I'm not sure how you would actually, you know, you've got 100 images for 100 points here, how you would show those 100 um, ROIs across 100 images. Um, but um, that's something to think about, I guess. Um, OK, so that's, that, that basically outlines a couple of different directions we could go for the next um, iteration of, of Parade, um, basically with the, with the goal of being able to plot ROI, um, ROI data from ROIs in the mirror. OK, I'll, I'll stop there. We've got a few minutes for questions, I guess. Thanks, Will. Do you want me to stop the recording or do you want to, what do you want? Don't mind. Um, okay. Yeah, um, keep going. I, I include the question like this. For... Yeah, why not? Alex, Alexander has a question here. Hi. Will, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have a question. If you do the interactive filtering or gating in the parade, can you save the modified table? So can you use it, for example, to exclude from further processing missegmentation? No, not, um, not currently. Um, I mean, you can, you can exclude, um, so if I, yeah, I mean, you can exclude some, some points, um, like uh, with a, with this, filtering here, um, but, and then, um, I mean, if I, if I, if I show that that's, uh, yeah, if, you, if this, if this now is down to a subset of these, of these points, I, then I can re rescale this, so that now I'm only viewing um, a smaller portion, but there's, there's no way to completely exclude them. Um, yeah, I, I mean, so I imagine um, you could, perhaps want to exclude certain ROIs before grouping the data by image or something. Um, but that's a bit harder to think how to do that. Right. Uh, Thanks. There's a, a question in the chat before Nico from Saskia. Well, uh, are you planning normalization of the measurement across a plate screening? Wow. <laughs> so, so I guess the tricky thing is, and, 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 that's that's an interesting idea, but um, I, I guess the balance is to think how to how to um, make it generic enough. Um, so, like like in the grouping um, here, that's kind of a, a generic um, functionality. Um, it's not, yeah. So it gets harder if you try to introduce um, functionalities for specific cases. So even in the screen plate, well, I guess we do have the layout. Um, so and the, the, probably it's it's going to get harder to handle um, very large numbers of, of plates from that. You know, to give a layout view of, of a large number of plates, um, it'd be interesting to think how to, how to do that. For um, I mean, in, in this example, I only showed a couple of plates. Um, but yeah, I mean, good to have these ideas. Uh, so I guess I guess my fundamental question in trying to decide the next directions is whether whether these kind of more specific um, functionalities, so like the whole screen plate well layout ideas, is that is it going to ever be possible to take that kind of uh, thing and and implement it in um, in the VTES viewer, or is that something that's just going to be too Amero specific and it's going to just need a, a more, much more dedicated application. I mean, um, I think VTES can support new, there are some, some documentation on how to write, write new components. Um, and so in theory, it should allow for, for that some of that extensions. Um, but yeah, still quite early days.
Nico, this question you had your hand raised. Mm -hmm. um, it goes a bit in the same direction as the one from Alexander. Um, when you were showing the filtering in, uh, in right this one earlier, you were showing uh, the multi data sets that you could filter by name. But when you showed the filter, the data sets had different colors. So assuming you have a scatter plot that includes multiple data sets, would it be possible to color the, the, the spots uh, in the scatter plot um, by yeah. the color? Because the, like the, different populations are, yeah. Yes, I think, it, I think that should be possible. At the moment, I'm just using color to show the selected, um, to per, show the persistence of the selection. Um, but yeah, you're right. So, so if I was to color, so I guess in in the case where I was doing sort of grouping, um, grouping by data set, um, okay. So adds. Um, that, that's kind of that's kind of what you meant, yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, it doesn't make sense in this case to join all the dots, but you kind of mean coloring it like this, but without yeah. the dots. Kind yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. I don't know if Alexander, you have another question or not, because your hand is still raised. Uh... Sorry. Just forgot to lower the end. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, any question, comment, Jason? Put a comment in the in the chat. Do you want to expand on that, Jason? Or? Yeah, it's just, you know, this is amazing and it's great to see this. Um, um, the visualization is probably and filtering, which is I, you know, you know, we'll use the term filtering an awful lot. Uh, just in the lab here, I've been doing an awful lot of cell painting and working with that. And I think there's, we'll have to draw a line between, um, for those of you who do a lot of HCS, you know, robust seed normalization at plate level on individuals, on, on, on plates of individual cells, that ain't gonna happen in a browser, at least as far as I know. Um, that, that's probably not a strategy. Nico might have um, ideas on that. But once, once you get to that reduced data set, um, then this type of approach might be very powerful. One thing we're missing in um, um, Amaro is the model to store, you know, a state like this one or anything else. Now, many of you will think, oh, just write it out of JSON or whatever, and we're certainly thinking about that in other context, but um, um, yeah, just understanding how to do that is certainly something we need to do. Sorry. Anyway, um, so, sorry for expressing uh, just a strong opinion, but that was, um, at least that's the experience that we've had just with the type of data that are coming into these types of experiments. I'm happy to be told that that's completely wrong. You can do everything in the browser, it would be fine. Which case it would be- Yeah, so, so I guess what I was, what I was thinking of is that if, when I get a data set that's too big, so um, so this is so I've tried with uh, like 150,000 rows um, so far. That's kind of the biggest table that I've loaded, um, and that seems to be okay. If when I get a date, my hands on a data set that's too big, um, then the idea was to use to do some filtering in an Amero table first, where we where we can use the HDF you know Amero table queries. Um, and then still load the filtered data as, as CSV, um, since we can do that, we can do that as well. So that would be like a first step to get rid of everything you don't want and then 